Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're talking about the top five books on the problem of evil slash articles. We're going to be going over the top five lists and give you an honorable mention to learn more about the problem of evil. Now, I want to make it very clear that this isn't a comprehensive um, list in the sense that if you want to know everything about the problem of evil, you're definitely not going to be able to introduce to these five books or articles. These are going to give you a brief understanding of different perspectives to the problem of evil both arguments for the problem of evil and arguments against the problem of evil, like the Odysseys. So without further ado, let's get right into it and talk about the first one, which is an article, It's Evil and Omnipotence by Mackey. This is perhaps one of the biggest or the most famous problem of evil works on um, the development of the logical problem of evil. It's kind of cited most if you're going to read anything on the problem of evil, logical problem of evil especially. You're probably going to see something similar to evil and omnipotence or some reference to Mackey. Of course, Mackey later on, after reading some Pantinga, did believe that the logical problem of evil was defeated. However, he still, or I think that this still provides kind of the, the best summary of the logical problem of evil and it's just a very good place to start off with if you're interested in understanding what the logical problem of evil is and how you could possibly formulate it and then develop your own formulations or ideas about it later on for yourself but this is a very very good place to start off with now the second thing is more about the evidential problem of evil as i've said previously in a previous video if you are kind of interested in problem of evil there's normally two formulations of the problem of evil the logical problem of evil which is mainly just demonstrating how if God exists and if evil exists, then it's logically impossible for God to exist. Well, here, the evidential problem of evil is more of an inductive one to say, well, given the existence of evil and given the possibility of God, it is very unlikely that God exists. And a place which is very good to read is another article by Draper called God and Evil, a Philosophical Inquiry. You can um, put that into Google. I think there's a few PDFs where you could just click on to it's completely free to access. So this is definitely something you can check out. Of course, there are other formulations of evidential problem of evils. There are, I think, way more evidential formulations than logical formulations. However, I think that this would just give you a brief understanding into what evidential problem of evil are in some place where you can start off with and find it quite interesting just to say, well, this is how they like to argue it. Maybe I can develop it further. Or there's different things I can add to the evidential problem of evil. But this is a very, very good place to start off with. Now that we've talked about what the logical problem of evil is and the evidential problem of evil, we can turn it to um, one of the best um, theodicies, which is Leibniz um, theodicy. This is one of the lesser used theodicies because, of course, since uh, Voltaire, it, people have viewed it as a rather untenable theodicy, though I don't necessarily think that it is defeated. I could make a video about the best of all possible worlds theodicy in the future. I might raise it against T. Trump when I'm discussing the problem with, of evil with him. However, I do think that it is one of the underused ones, uh, underappreciated one. I think it's something you can go check out. Essentially, what he's arguing for is that the world that we live in today, although it doesn't seem like the best of all possible worlds, is actually the best of all possible worlds, either from a moral standpoint, which isn't really, I think, what Leibniz is getting at, but more from a value standpoint. It is good. The world which we live in today is good. And perhaps you could bring in some Hegelian twists and interpretations later on. Who also talks about the fall, viewing how the fall is necessary for the goodness of the world to be achieved. And that's something you can think about. I think theodicy is like Leibniz's theodicy is a very, very good book. It discusses a lot, a lot of different other topics apart from just the problem of evil. However, I do think it's an interesting place to start off with when you're looking at one of the possible responses to the problem of evil. Now, the second thing is um, God, Freedom, and Evil uh, by Plantinga. He is one of the leading philosophers of religion on the problem of evil. He talks a lot about it in a few different books, Nature and Necessity being another one of them. And I think God and Other Minds, I'm, I can't remember whether he does talk about it. I think he does talk about the problem of evil there. But essentially, I would just think that um, Plantinga's work is very, very good. And of course, the name being God, Freedom of Evil, talks a lot about the free will defense that he raises against Mackey's logical problem of evil. And I think that that is definitely very, very helpful and a very good place to start off with in understanding the problem of evil and the free will defense, which according to Mackey was quite successful in defeating the logical problem of evil. Now, of course, its application to the evidential problem of evil might be a bit more limited. Nevertheless, I do think it provides a good explanation for moral evil, and it's something where you can definitely start off with and then develop a free will theodicy or free will defense from that. And I think it's quite a helpful book to read when it comes to the problem of evil. Now, the fifth one is a bit of a, maybe um, a curveball. You might not be expecting this, but um, it is called The Theodicy of Love by Peckham. I think it's a very, very good book. What I, I think it does best is that it 
It recognizes that theodicy shouldn't only be just resolving philosophical problems, but it's also about putting the situation of home of evil within uh, philosophical and within um, theological landscape as well. You're not only talking about God and evil, you're recognizing that there are other parts, other propositions within the Christian faith or within a certain belief system, which may also um, account for evil in the world. For example, um, the existence of demonic entities, the existence of angels, fallen angels, and the considering the entirety of the Christian worldview and how that interacts with the existence of evil, I think is quite helpful and something which is quite interesting. And it does really show that you're not really only defending the problem of evil from a theological or, or philosophical perspective. You also have to defend it from a theological perspective as well in order for it to be the most convincing. Now, an honorable mention will be The Destiny of Man by Bird Yayev. I think it provides a mystic um, illustration of the problem of evil. Of course, this book, is main, main goal isn't necessarily to develop a, a solution to the problem of evil, but it implicitly develops the problem of evil in the sense that it recognizes by developing the role and the relationship between God and man, God and the good in an ethical sense. He also talks about God as a value sense and also then as um, as a consequence when you're talking about these two things, the problem of evil necessarily arises. And as a result, he touches upon it as well. And I think it's quite an interesting book. And of course, the perspective that he provides is very different from the traditional sense to say, well, God is in conflict with evil. It is more of a, uh, a discussion in a Nietzschean sense, by, by the way, to say, well, God is beyond good and evil, and as a result, cannot be put up against evil as kind of a, as opposing forces. So that's just something you can think about as an honorable mention. I highly recommend you to check out all of these articles and books. These will be very helpful in understanding the problem of evil and also understanding more about theology and philosophy as a whole in general if you're just getting into the field. Something that could be helpful whether you're atheist or theist, it's good to know both what your side argues for and what the op opposing side argues for, and that's definitely something which is very, very helpful. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. It helps the channel grow. Stay safe, my friends. See you soon. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. I'll see you next one.